I want to come on to the next stage which you've talked about, which is what you call interpretation, and we've actually covered yeah. some of these issues yeah. already. Um, but you talk about listing the codes and then things like selectivity, openness, relationships yeah. between themes. Can you perhaps expand some yeah, of those ideas? Okay. I think it's important that, that, and of course, the whole process of refining your template and coding all your data to fit it as best you can is an interpretive po process. Now, if you stop there and gave a p person your template and links to things beyond on, on, online with hyperlinks, mm -hmm. they could tell quite a bit about your thinking. But it's, but that wouldn't be enough. It's not telling you how you see these things linking together all that well. It's not telling you which of these themes seem most important to you. Which ones? What are the consequences of these things? I mean, I have seen occasionally dissertations where people have felt the need to just go through every single theme and write a bit about each one and you're kind of by about yes, a third of the way yes, through it's yes. incredibly tedious because actually there's far too much detail you what, what you're looking for now is for the, the researcher to say having organized all this stuff and got my head around it so I've got some kind of overview and I can see a bit of how it links together now I want to tell you about you know what these findings mean for this research question. Okay. So I think it, that's why it's important that people think about what they do beyond simply doing all the coding and then describing what's in those codes. So I think, you know, obviously one step you can do is to simply look at what codes, and what themes rather, appear where. Uh, and I would normally do that because it's just useful to know and, and it, can, it can throw out some interesting things. If you notice that there's certain themes that some subgroups of your sample never mention, and these ones do, yeah. okay, yeah. that says, that's an interesting thing. Let's go and look at that data yeah. and look at that coding and see if we can work out what, might, what might be going on. The danger, obviously, is you just, particularly if you're used to a very quantitative approach, is you take that as a conclusion in itself. You yeah. said, this was more important because it was mentioned by seven of them and only three of them. Now, that's an spurious uh, conclusion to draw. You know, you don't know why that only three of them mentioned it. Maybe they, maybe the way you ask questions in those group of interviews was different to this one. Yeah. So what it does is it raises a question, mm. and and so I think you know the listing and looking at the pattern codes is a cue to you as a researcher to do some interpretive work. Just, just let's go back to the data and to our coding and say what might be going on here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think inevitably, even in a PhD where well, you've got so much word space, it seems. You have to be selective. Um, now, it, it would be rare for a, a, um, a template in, in any qualitative study of any size to have fewer than, say, 50 individual themes in it. Often, a lot more than that. You know, you, as I said, if you try and go through all of those, you can only do it in a really very dull, uninformative kind of listing way. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be looking at it and say which of these themes are going to enlighten us in relation to what I'm trying to do yes. here. Yeah. You know, 